Levels Facebook Live tour of our medicinal herb garden. What's going on? You're shaking your head. Start We're the intro. Testing this up. Okay. Now. So, what? Start the intro now. Okay. Hi, good morning. <laughs> this is our first time doing a Facebook Live video, so forgive us for any technical difficulties we might have. Uh, welcome to Dianpore Farm and to the Dianpore Herbals Medicinal Herb Garden. We are really delighted to be able to give you a tour of our garden. We're not gonna see the whole garden today, but we're gonna see a good portion of it. We're gonna talk about the herbs. We're gonna tell you a little bit about them and how we grow them. And then we're also gonna talk about how we use them in our Dime Per Herbals products. So uh, welcome and please join us for a tour of the garden. Come on in. over 40 plants in our medicinal herb garden. Uh, we just love plants and we'd have a hundred of them if we could take care of all of them. But we have over 40 that we do cultivate and uh, you should know that almost 80% of the herbs we use in our products we grow right here in this quarter acre garden. Normally this time of year we offer an herbal medicine workshop which uh, we do tours of the garden, we do workshops, we talk about how we grow them and how we make the medicine. Unfortunately, due to the COVID-19, everything has been canceled as we know. So we're trying a little live video to hopefully give you a taste of what you could have seen this June. We're hoping that maybe later in the summer we can open it up and do garden tours and, and other workshops. So bear with us and stay with us as we go through the garden. So we're gonna start right here with this lovely, beautiful plant. This is called calendula. Calendula is a tissue restorative. If you could actually feel the leaves of the calendula plant, they're like silk. And you would readily understand how calendula serves as a tissue restorative. It literally knits together the skin tissue. So it's really wonderful for doing, um, using it in topicals like our herbal salve. We have our inflammation pain relief oil. We have um, our breast care oils. Uh, calendula is used in so many plants. We grow a lot of calendula because we use so much of it. Uh, what you're looking at right now is our echinacea. The echinacea is just starting to flower. If you look back here, we have dozens of echinacea plants in our garden. These are all getting ready to flower and they will flower soon. They'll be twice as tall when they're done flowering. Um, so the echinacea is really good for immune boosting, which a lot of people are interested in right now because of all the viruses going around and the concerns for getting healthy. Uh, we like to say, like, keep your immune system strong all year round. Your immune system strong actually will also help with your allergies, uh, not just with colds and flus and viruses. It'll help with your allergies, keeping your system strong. Echinacea is wonderful for doing that. We actually use the root of the echinacea plant. Um, echinacea is a perennial, so it does come back year after year, and it will get to be uh, twice as tall as this, and there'll be these beautiful uh, purple magenta type flowers. The uh, bed right behind the flower of echinacea, this is our new raised bed of St. John's wort. These are St. John's wort starts. We love St. John's wort. We're always weeding the St. John's wort bed as well. We love St. John's wort. St. John's wort is a nervine. That means that it's an anti-inflammatory for your nervous system. We use St. John's wort in a number of products as well. We use St. John's wort in our herbal salve so that it calms down any kind of skin irritation. We use it in our boo-boo spray, which also calms down uh, things like sunburn, poison ivy, cuts. It's a wonderful first aid spray. And then we also make a tincture of St. John's wort, which people will take orally. It's a liquid extract. Uh, it will help calm the nervous system. A lot of people will use it if they have anxiety or depression or even shingles and uh, those sorts of ailments. 
So we're very excited. We're hoping by the end of the year, this whole bed will be flowering with St. John's Ward. We also have included this year, we've also included a number of culinary herbs. Uh, culinary herbs are also quite um, medicinal. What you're looking at right now is oregano. I wish you could smell it. We should do a scratch and sip, sniff uh, a video live. Um, uh, uh, oregano is also an anti-inflammatory. You can use it in all kinds of cooking. You can use it, uh, obviously, put it in with your vegetables, put it on your meat. It's a wonderful, really aromatic, uh, flavorful herb that also has anti-inflammatory products involved with it. So over on this side, we have um, horseradish. And look at we got Chubbs. Chubbs is going to be joining us today. Chubbs loves to be around people and Chubbs spends a lot of time in the herb garden with us. We have horseradish, as you can see. We have this row of germander. Uh, it's just a germander hedge. And then right in front of the germander is some more of the calendula. These have yet to flower. We're early in the season. We're like a week or two from uh, these uh, calendula plants flowering. Uh, so we'll move on from here. All right. So if we go down the aisle, we have lots and lots of yellow dock in our garden. Yellow dock is this raggy looking weedy plant, but yellow dock is amazing. Again, we use the root of the yellow dock plant. This is also a perennial, meaning it comes up year after year. One of the things that we found in the garden is some of the plants like to grow where they like to grow. We try to cultivate and, and quote, domesticate some of the plants just so that we can grow enough of them to make our products. But in many instances, we'll let the plants grow where they like to grow. And yellow dock is one of them. It'll show up everywhere. We harvest the yellow dock root uh, after the second frost of each year. The root is very potent. Yellow dock is used for many things. It's a liver cleanser. It also is very helpful for things like constipation and lower GI issues. And i um, trying to think of some of the others. Uh, there's many other things, but mainly known as a liver cleanser and for constipation. And I'll tell you what, it works. Okay, let's go down the aisle. This year, we've had a really bumper crop of our comfrey. What you're looking at right now is comfrey. And look at the beautiful purple flowers of the comfrey plant. We use the aerial part and the leaves of the comfrey. Comfrey is also a perennial. I would say the vast majority actually of our medicinal plants are perennials, which means they come up year after year. The comfrey we harvest and dry and use in our herbal salve. Comfrey is really, really wonderful for, um, uh, comfrey is great for um, healing the skin or healing wounds. A lot of people, if they're out hiking, you can uh, chomp on the comfrey and use it as a compress to heal bruises, sprains, broken bones. Another word for comfrey is bone knit. So it literally uh, helps heal uh, underlying wounds. I actually used it on a bruise. This bruise was three times as purple just last night. And I put salve on it last night and I put salve on it this morning and it's already starting to go away. I love it for uh, healing bruises. So comfrey is lovely and we've had just a bumper crop of it this year. Then we get into what I consider my favorite plant, yarrow. Look at our lovely, lovely yarrow. Yarrow is also a perennial, comes back year after year, loves to spread through the root system. Um, it starts off as these little unbudded flowers and then it turns into these just lovely tiny, you can see in comparison to my hand, these just lovely, tiny, beautiful white flowers. We use the aerial part of the yarrow plant. Um, it's an anti-inflammatory. It helps reduce swelling. We use yarrow actually in a number of products. We use it in our inflammation pain relief oil, which is a topical for uh, healing wounds and, and healing sore joints, sore muscles, bug bites, any kind of like swollen, inflamed, achy skin. It's really, really helpful. We use it in our bug repellent. Yarrow is a natural bug repellent. Oh, look at the bees. The bees are loving, loving, loving the flowers right here. The 
He is getting the pollen. We've had such a lovely spring this year. Oh my gosh. And uh, the, with all the flowers in our medicinal herb garden, the bees have a heyday in here. They just roll in the pollen. And it's really great. <laughs> um, so back to the yarrow. Yarrow is a natural bug repellent. Uh, actually, the animals love laying in the yarrow because it helps keep the bugs away from them, at least temporarily. Yarrow is an anti-inflammatory and helps reduce swelling. So we uh, also use it in our breast care oils and in our inflammation pain relief oil, as I mentioned. And we also make a tincture out of it. Uh, yarrow can be very helpful for um, treating viruses, reducing inflammation of, for women maybe that are having menstrual cramping. Uh, and yarrow is an adaptogen. It is so intelligent, and this is one of the things I love about plant-based medicine, is it actually will um, determine whether your body, in this case, what I, the example I'm using is menstruation, if your body needs to bleed more or if it needs to bleed less. You take yarrow for the same thing, and the yarrow works with your body because plant-based medicine is the same biology as your body. It works with your body to determine what your body needs to heal. Really beautiful. All right, we're going to move on. How we doing? I hope you're enjoying this. I uh, hope I'm not overloading you with too much information. We haven't even made it down one aisle of the herb garden right now. We're going to turn our attention actually down here to uh, red clover. Red clover is another plant that we use. It's a perennial. comes back year after year. It's so lovely. It's um, just these beautiful uh, magenta flowers. Not sure why they call it red clover because it's actually magenta clover. Uh, red clover is, we make a tincture out of red clover. Red clover is a tincture that is used for many things. It's a, it's a uh, blood thinner. So you do have to be careful if you're on blood thinners. You don't want to take red clover with it. A lot of women use it for menopause issues. It's a phytoestrogen. So it can help balance out your hormones. I would say uh, the vast majority of the people that use red clover use it for those two things, as a um, blood thinner and as a um, uh, phytoestrogen to help with menopausal issues. It can really help with hot flashes. I'm telling you, it works. And then over here, we have, this is a poke plant. Now, as many people know, the medicinal plants are often invasive weeds. Let's just be honest. Most of these medicinal plants are considered invasive weeds in most situations. Poke root is one of them. Poke root will show up all over the garden, but we love poke root because poke root is a really strong medicinal. We use it in our intensive breast care oil. It's almost like an antibiotic. It will help, it's known, I should say, to help reduce cysts and lumps for women that are dealing with breast issues. You can even use it if, if uh, uh, you have issues going on in your neck with uh, swollen, inflamed lymph, lymph glands. Um, it's very strong and it's very, very effective. All right, we're gonna keep moving. We're happy to introduce, we have a new little library box in our uh, garden here. And uh, we put this in here because we want people to be able to come to this herb garden and really enjoy it and sit in the garden, enjoy the birds, enjoy the trees, enjoy the plants. So we've added some books on uh, trees and on flowers and herbs and birds. And we even put some binoculars in there. So if people really want to get into bird watching or whatever, they can. So this is one of our newest additions to our medicinal herb garden. Terry, we actually have a question. Oh, we do? What's the yes. question? Yes. Um, Jesse Jo Warner was wondering if women use red clover for postpartum hormonal issues. That's a really good question. And um, I would need to double check on that, Jesse Jo. I want to talk to Nina and see if that would be something appropriate to prescribe for a postpartum issue. Uh, hormones are very, very sensitive, and I wouldn't want to say anything that I'm not certain about. So let me look into that and I will get back to you and I'll actually post it so that everybody can see the answer to that question. Thank you for offering that, I appreciate that. All right, so the plant, this gymungous plant that we're walking by right now, this is Elecampane. This is Elecampane. 
and this will get three times as big as what you're seeing right now. We've got these huge elephant ears and it will grow into tall stalks and those beautiful yellow flowers. You can use every part, well, you can use the flowers. <laughs> You can use the yellow flowers or you can use the roots. We tend to use the roots again because the roots are very, very potent. Elecampane we make into a tincture. And as a tincture, elecampane is a really good bronchial remedy. A lot of people have used a ton of this for this winter and dealing with respiratory issues. You can use it for uh, chronic coughs. It works as an expectorant, but it also works as a healer of the bronchial tissue. So it's not just getting rid of the congestion, it helps heal the bronchial tissue as well. If you're recovering from pneumonia, or if you have uh, other uh, bronchitis, other lung or bronchial issues, elecampane is really, really great. One of, one of my favorites as well. All right, we're gonna walk down the aisle here. And Yes, of course, we have lots of uh, elderberry. The elderberry is very, very young right now. You can see that it's trying to flower. Uh, probably in the next couple weeks, we're gonna see the beautiful white flowers of the elderberry plant. It flowers approximately a month before the berries come on. Um, elderberry is also a very invasive plant. It grows through the uh, root system and if you let it go, it would take over this entire garden. <laughs> we don't want it to do that, so we try to contain it a little bit. Um, but of course, elderberry and elderberry syrup is so good for you. It's good for boosting your immune system. It's good for clearing uh, upper respiratory congestion. You can use it all year round because actually your, your allergies will be minimized if you have a strong immune system. And of course, if you help eliminate stress in your life, that would be helpful too. Uh, but elderberry syrup we make with uh, elderberries, we make it with uh, raw local honey, we make it with lime juice, we make it with organic alcohol, and we make it, of course, I said honey, didn't I? Yeah, honey, can't, can't forget the honey. So uh, elderberry syrup is really, really great to take for many, many reasons. All right, so we're gonna keep on moving. Stinging nettle. Stinging nettle is the first herb that comes up each spring. And I tell you what, it does sting. Um, it's, uh, you can see, I don't know if you can see on the camera, but the little tiny, tiny hairs on the stem. The stinging nettle is the most potent in April. So you can see now that we're in June, the stinging nettle is a little milder than it, what it would be. We start harvesting stinging nettle early April. And that's, we get those nice fresh starts that are really, really potent. Stinging nettle is wonderful for allergies. It's great um, uh, for, it's a natural antihistamine. And it's, if you have the kind of the itchy eyes, runny nose, post nasal drip, those are kind of stinging nettle symptoms. And uh, com uh, the good companion tincture is mullein leaf, which is a natural decongestant. So the stinging nettle along with the mullein leaf makes for a really good allergy punch. And we'll talk more about that as we go down the line here. So stinging nettle is just wonderful and it will, it will grow all throughout the season. Uh, but the springtime and the early springtime is indeed the best time to get it. We, uh, we've made all of our tinctures already for the year uh, with the, the early spring stinging nettle. And we've dried a whole bunch of it as well so that we're prepared to make more. All right. So we're going to move on down. And... We have more elecampane, we have more elderberry, we have, oh, this is, this is so lovely. This is the passion, the passion flowers. We, uh, we will trellis all of these passion flowers. They, oh, if you've never seen a passion flower, they're beautiful, beautiful purple and white flowers. They're, they're incredibly intricate. And you just kind of go, wow, you just stare at it. It just draws you right in. Uh, passion flower is um, is good. It's it's a kind of a sedative sort of thing, and um, we make a, a tincture out of that as well. Right next to it, we have plantain. Plantain comes in a couple forms. Most of you are familiar with this broadleaf plantain. This is probably all over your yard. Plantain is fabulous. Uh, this again is another good first aid remedy if you ever injure yourself. Just take a plantain leaf, 
chew it up a little bit and use it as a compress. We dry it and we use the plantain in our inflammation pain relief oils. We use it in our breast care oils. Plantain tends to have the effect of actually stimulating your circulation. So it really helps promote the healing of wounds. Um, and we have both the broadleaf and the narrow leaf plantain. Uh, it's really, really wonderful. I, I love the delicacy of the, of the narrow leaf plantain. Needless to say, we grow lots and lots of plantain. And, uh, and then last but not least, for today anyway, we want to show you the Tulsi Holy Basil. I love, love, love the little flowers of the Tulsi Holy Basil. It's already flowering and uh, looking beautiful. Uh, Tulsi Holy Basil is really, really good for stress relief. For stress relief and reducing anxiety, it's good for balancing your body. It's also, it's an adaptogen. It's an adaptogen that will help your body come into balance. And it's an adapt, I'm sweating like crazy. It's already getting hot out here. Um, it's an adaptogen, so it will help your body come into balance. And it also is good for respiratory as well. Um, it can help fight uh, respiratory viruses. It's a, it's a really, really wonderful uh, plant. So we make a tincture out of it. A lot of people know it as tea as well. You can dry it and make tea out of it. It's lovely. So we have a lot more to show you, but I think that's a good taste for today. I, I, I hope you've enjoyed that. Um, and again, if you do have other questions, and Jesse Joe will get back to you about your question about postpartum. And, but before we go, I want to just kind of show you some of the products that we make out of all these beautiful plants. So we make 25 different products with all these plants. We make tinctures, we make infused oils. Tinctures are also known as liquid extracts. We make infused oils, we make elderberry syrup, we make herbal salve, uh, we make breast care oils, we make ear oil. Um, actually, the plantain is used in our ear oil as well. Really good for uh, ear infections and healing ear, ear aches. So some of our products here, we've got the, the, uh, <laughs> the cat just knocked over our little brochure. Um, we've got our tinctures, echinacea. These are just a few of them. Elecampane, stinging nettle, St. John's wort, yarrow. There's droppers that you can use. This is our herbal salve. We have three different sizes. Elderberry syrup is a must-have. Keep it on your shelf. Put it in your summer iced tea. Put it in your summer lemonade. Put it in your favorite summer drink. It's really, really tasty, and it's really great for boosting your immune system. You can use it all year round. We make uh, a boo-boo spray. This has the calendula and St. John's wort in it. We make an all-natural bug repellent, which is made with yarrow. It's also made with... Uh, Organic essential oils of citronella and grapefruit oil. Grapefruit oil actually is a repellent for ticks, and citronella, of course, is a repellent for mosquitoes and insects. So it's a really great combination having the yarrow, citronella, and grapefruit oil in there. Uh, and it smells really good. It's nice, very nice. These are our inflammation pain relief oils. We have two versions of them. One has essential oil of lavender and wintergreen. That is really great for um, sore joints, sore muscles, bug bites, etc. The inflammation pain relief for sensitive skin, really great for eczema or just people who don't want the uh, essential oils in the oil. But it has the yarrow, plantain, and calendula, which reduces swelling, it stimulates circulation, and it heals tissue. What a great combination. Groovy Booby is one of our breast care oils. Groovy Booby is great for um, uh, daily massage. It's probably the single best thing women can do for um, uh, breast massage. Uh, meaning, doing breast massage helps move the lymph fluid. Lymph fluid in your body doesn't move unless you move it. So important to get daily exercise, but also important to do daily massage. Uh, and the breast care oils contain the yarrow, plantain, and calendula, reduce swelling, stimulate circulation, and a tissue restorative. Uh, we have a breast friend version, which is for the nursing mom. We don't use essential oils in this because we don't want the baby's bonding with mom to be interfered with with other smells like lavender. Uh, the baby needs to bond with the mommy smell. 
And then I mentioned earlier the intensive breast care oil. This is a poke root oil. This is a very powerful oil. We have an actual protocol that we send out with this. Um, really great for helping to reduce cysts and lumps and uh, can be very uh, effective for that. And then for those who are interested, we actually have kits. We have allergy remedies, which contains the stinging nettle, the mullen, and an el uh, elderberry syrup. We have an outdoor essentials. This is a new one. It has the bug repellent, the boo-boo spray, and the herbal salve. And of course, aches and pains. It has the inflammation pain relief oil. It has the uh, elderberry syrup, and it has an herbal salve. You can find all these products in the 40 stores that we're in across the country. We also do sell online at www.dyingpoorherbals.com and you can even find the store on our website that is near you. I really appreciate the time you took to be with us today. Uh, we're really excited to share this with you uh, and really sad that we can't have our herbal medicine workshop, but we will find ways to stay connected and I hope you do the same. Have a great day and stay healthy and stay safe. Thank you.